Our next story is about a computer systems analyst. In 1992, she found herself pulled into a strange netherworld where she was haunted by a shadowy double. Soon her identity was no longer her own. Her privacy was invaded, her most personal documents forged. She became, in effect, a casualty on the information superhighway. The woman's name was Carol Anderson. Now it is Carol Ryan. And she has a clear and urgent message for our audience. Credit card users, beware. I came home from work late one Saturday evening and was going through the mail, and I found a Neiman Marcus bill, which I thought was curious, because I hadn't used my account for some time. And I opened it up, and there was a bill for over $1,800. I was astounded. And my heart dropped into my stomach, and I got very distressed. So I immediately went to the drawer where I kept my unused cards, and my, there was my Neiman's card. It, it was right there in the drawer. When Carol called Neiman Marcus, she was told that the charges had been incurred at their store in Newport Beach, California. Carol lives in Alexandria, Virginia, and had never even been to Newport Beach. Two days later, she received a bill from another Southern California department store, this one for more than $2,000. Both stores eventually canceled the charges, and Carol assumed that was the end of it. I'm here to renew my driver's license. And your name? At the Department of Motor Vehicles, however, there was another shock in store. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Anderson, it says here that your license was surrendered in another state in May of 1992. That's impossible. I haven't even been out of the state of Virginia. Possibly um, you had a duplicate license that was surrendered? No, no. As a matter of fact, I've got the original right here. Hmm. Carol and the DMV concluded that a computer entry error had been made. They had no way of knowing that someone had literally stolen the real Carol Anderson's identity. I'm telling you, you have the wrong Carol Anderson. I'm not the person you're looking for. Soon collection agencies began hounding Carol for payment on purchases she had never made. Through no fault of her own, Carol had become a credit disaster. I had no idea. Okay, Meanwhile, some 3,000 miles away in California, the cause of Carol's problems was operating and shopping at will. Thank you, Miss Anderson. Thanks. Bye-bye. The other Carol Anderson racked up a substantial bill, nearly $10,000 in all. There's a few families, and uh, mostly professional people, though. Exactly what I'm looking for. The bogus well, Carol even okay, went so far as to sign a lease for a pricey apartment in Laguna Beach, California, presenting a list of references who thought she was Carol Anderson. Toward the end of the week, so I believe you'd be able to move in on Monday. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. Yeah, have a good day. The real Carol Anderson back in Virginia heard about the new apartment in a most unpleasant way. She was being sued for non-payment of rent. Carol requested that the landlord's attorney send her proof of the renter's identification. After some time, I received in the mail nothing more than two pieces of paper with a photocopy of a social security card and the photocopy of a Florida driver's license with all of my data in somebody else's picture. And I was just devastated. Mrs. Anderson, I have a printout that shows that in May of 1992, you came into our office. In desperation, Carol finally went to the Social Security office to see if they could shed any light on her predicament. Someone came into our office with copies of your marriage license and your birth certificate. And as these are uh, proper forms of identification, we issued a duplicate card. Well, if somebody came in here with copies of my marriage... Now I was beginning to get angry. I had gotten over the initial shock, and I was going to get to the bottom of this. I couldn't fathom how this woman could get this level of detail about me and my life. 
I figure if she's done this to me, she's done it to someone else. And the big concern that I have is as she ages, not only is she going to use people's credit, but then she's going to start hitting people's social security benefits. And she just really needs to be stopped. This is a photograph of the fake Carol Anderson. Her real name is Rita Carla Faulkner. She was born in Texas on June 1st, 1941. She is five feet, three inches tall, weighs 179 pounds and has blue eyes. Faulkner has operated her scams in Texas, Florida, and Southern California. A few of the surnames in her long list of aliases are Posado, Johnson, Taft, Vander Elst, Montgomery, Glover, and Hall. There are four different warrants out for her arrest. Fraud experts have given us a few tips to help you avoid having your identity lifted. First, never have your social security number imprinted on personal checks. Second, Shred or burn all documents and expired credit cards. And third, if anyone asks you to verify your social security number by phone, hang up. Remember, what happened to Carol Anderson could happen to anyone. If you have any information about Rita Carla Faulkner, please contact the police in Alexandria, Virginia, the Sheriff's Department in Orange County, California, or call your local law enforcement agency.